Isaiah 45 and 4 For Jacob my servant's sake And Israel mine elect I ain't even called thee by name I have surnamed thee Though thou hast not known me I am Yahweh And there is none else There is no God beside me I girded thee Though thou hast not known me Yasharala, Yahweh Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh Khud. First and foremost, I'm going to say, Call Halal Yahweh by Son Yahweh Shai. It's all praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who will ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Right. And what I seen here earlier with Sister, I wasn't even going to go into the, go into that today, but now I want to talk about it. Right? Yeah. This whole thing about the Bible indoctrinating Black people, the Bible uh, forcing us to be slaves. You know what forced us to be slaves? This right here. White supremacy for chattel slavery when they when they said we cannot read and the what we're gonna give to you is the slave Bible with all the revolutionary verses taken out of it, right? right. What comes after that? The black codes, Jim Crow laws, the the, the uh, uh, Black Wall Street ma uh, uh, massacre, redlining, all that white supremacy that's forced us and indoctrinated us. And so believing that they have the they have the breakdowns of the Bible and we don't. Right. So when we go to them, right? Give me hold hold this real fast. We're coming right back to this. Give me Romans three and one. When we go to them for breakdowns of the Bible, it's going to be incorrect. Do you know why that is? Because the Bible was never committed to them. Right. Read this. This is Romans chapter three from the top. Up. What advantage then had the Jew? What what is our advantage or what makes us superior? The Greek word for this advantage means superior. What makes us superior being a Jew? Go ahead out. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Mm -hmm. Much every way. Yeah. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The what? We're committed the oracles of God. We were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God is the Bible. Right. We have the breakdown. That's why we have a clear breakdown than the rest of the Christian church. Our breakdown doesn't contradict the Bible, but there's no. So when we go to them and look at them as like the golden standard through the white supremacy they put upon us, that's when we start having BS doctrines. Right. Like, like slaves obey their masters, mean obey, o o uh, obey the person who's whooping you over and over and over again through generations and times. But read this. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. Bring it out. For the bewitching of naughtiness. Yeah. Do obscure things that are honest. Uh, do what? Do, do obscure what? things that, that are honest. The Bible is honest. The law, statutes, and commandments. Give me Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Bring it out. Real fast. These commandments, these laws, these enlighten us. This is our judgments that we need to reign on the earth. When we go outside of that, we become niggas. We become nothing. We become people just like the Gentiles who just go around killing people, doing whatever to their own people, and not showing love. That's why we do those things. Give me Psalm 19, verse 8. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19, and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, convert the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Go ahead. The statutes of the Lord are right, yeah. rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. That's what's honest. Right. These commandments, these laws, these statutes, these are right, these are pure, this is what enlightens our eyes. Right. Give me Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. We're going to finish off this point, right? Because that's also why the Christians don't understand the Bible. They want to negate the laws, they want to negate all the commandments, they literally want to negate what God told them to do. They don't be held to no type of standard. That's why you see deacons taking other deacons' wives. That's why you see deacons' wives having sex with other people in the congregation. Right. The pastor doing whatever he wants to do. The pastor robbing you. Somebody show, uh, showing grudges and like you know like yeah you know you have like grandmas in there with the big old hats holding grudges against Agnes like two pews away. We all seen all that because it's not held to no moral statute. Right. Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the what? The beginning the of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. Hey, brother. Brother. You don't hear me on the microphone? You just going to keep on walking? And that's how our people do. That's right. e Esau stop and listen. That's right. Esau stop and listen. You know, because like, what, what did Christ say in Matthew 11, right? If he'd have came to the Hamites, the damn Tyre and Zidon, they'd have repented long ago. But Jacob would just keep on walking. They don't care because they don't care about their people. Let me read that again from the top. Verse 10 from the top. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah, it's the beginning. It's where you start. This is the first principles. 
of the word, the law, statutes, and commandments. Genesis through Reve uh, Genesis through uh, uh, Deuteronomy. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Now, when Christians like to say the law is done away with, Christ died, so now we, Christ did it, so now we ain't got to do it. That's why the rest of their doctrines don't make no sense. Because they're, they, they're, they're less than babes at this point. They haven't even started the beginning of wisdom. That's why they don't understand anything. That's why they obscure everything. So when we go to them through the white supremacy that they put in our mindset, and like our, and the, and like our, uh, our, our women do, Right when they walk after them and fall, their doctors say, "Oh, the Bible used to indoctrinate us." You're giving Esau all that power. Right. <laughs> They're so powerful that they can take a book that was written to your forefathers, right, and listen, was written to your foremothers to twist and contort it to enslave you. No, we got brought into captivity because we transgressed the laws. Right. We can give you a solution. We can give you the problem. We can show all of that through the Bible, which you haven't even read. You haven't even read it. And on top of that, give me uh, uh, Proverbs 14, verse 15 before I make this point. She just heard that. A lot of our people just parakeet things. Oh, the Bible oh, the Bible's used for, uh, you know, you got that fake deep. Everybody got that fake deep uncle in their in they, uh, they family, right? The, the fake deep uncle said, oh, they just used that to enslave us. Oh, since they're stupid, since they're simple, they're going to just believe it and parakeet it and act like it's true doctrine. Read that. 14 to what? 14 to 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 15. The simple believe in every word. And that's a lot of our people. The simple right. believe in every word. Right. That fake deep uncle, fake deep, uh, fake deep uncles out there giving us some, some, some silly rap, right? Some s very, very, very silly rap. They're going to just eat it up. Because they think this man's deep, but he's really not. Go ahead. But the prudent man looking well to his going. But the smart person or prudent person is going to actually analyze that or at least do some research. We're in the information era. Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody has a computer, a supercomputer in their pockets. Right. Uh, yet everybody is dumber than, they, than they've ever been. Right. Why? Because everybody wants to be on Twitter. Everybody wants to be on IG. Everybody wants to be on YouTube. And not even watching the, the good videos on YouTube you need. Like the, like the Israelites teaching videos. They, they don't they don't watch that. They don't be on there watching some BS. Right. Everybody's dumb as hell. Right. If you want to be a prudent person, look around. Could criti critically analyze what you yourself believe in. Do that. That's what the prudent person does. But she didn't do that. Because if she would have did that, she, before she even said anything, she would have saw this right here. Look at this. How are we going to believe in a book? How are we going to believe in a book that says for us to, uh, to uh, serve our slave masters? We run around with a sign with you know, Hawashai <laughs> having chains around Esau. That don't make no damn sense. You don't even observe. You don't even observe who you came up against. But let's let's observe the gospel real quick. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah chapter sixty-one and verse one. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yeah. Because because the Lord uh, has anointed me to preach good tidings. Good tidings. Good tidings means good news. The gospel. Go ahead. Unto the meek. Yeah. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Yeah. To proclaim liberty to the captive. To what? To proclaim liberty to the captive. But no, I thought we we're supposed to remain in slavery. I thought we we're supposed to remain slaves to our slave master. Right? I thought that's I thought that's what the Bible teaches. But the gospel, the good news according to God, is you being freed from your slavery. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty to the captives yeah. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Yeah. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the day of vengeance of our God. That's the acceptable year for us. Us being saved, us captives being delivered from this place and from the hand of all that hate us. Right. That's the gospel. Not no, oh, obey your slave. If, if a white man's beating you down, raping your wife, doing X, Y, Z, just, be, just go along with it. Just be a good slave. The Let Bible don't teach that. Right. Right. That don't make no sense. Right. Read this. Come. To comfort all that mourn, mm -hmm. to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, yeah. to give unto them beauty for ashes. To give us beauty for ashes. We've been living in ashes the lowest state. Right. You are at the bottom. Where have, where the ashes remain? Literally at the bottom of the ground. Right. That's where we are. That's why we're riding the subways. That's why we're riding the trains. That's why we're riding the buses. That's why we're doing all that because yeah. we don't have the financial income to have a car right. like certain people. Like all these people in the world, we don't have that ability. You know why we don't have that? Because of this. 
And because of this, they're going to get this. Right. That's what the gospel teaches. Not, not to, to obey your slave master. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. That's talking about being, being subject to your teachers yeah. and your elders. Right. What are you talking about? We're servants of the Christ. We're held captive. We're a captive of hope. Right? That word captive means slave. Does that mean, or does that mean you're literally a slave? No. And things that are metaphorical, y'all don't understand, but y'all want to continue to parakeet things that you've heard, thinking you're deep, but you're really not. Right. A lot of people are as shallow as a damn kiddie pool. Right. And they themselves know it, but they want to profess themselves to be wise, but they're not. Right. Keep going. Con. The oil of joy for mourning, mm -hmm. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, mm -hmm. that they may be uh, like that they might be called trees of righteousness, mm -hmm. the planting of Yahweh, mm -hmm. that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the way cities, the desolations of many generations. That's talking about us restoring our kingdom, restoring it to what it used to be. Because when you look over there, look over there now, they don't even possess all of the land. The people who, who call themselves Jewish, they don't even possess all these. You have the now to the Euphrates. Y'all don't have that. When you get brought in your land, it's supposed to be world peace. Y'all don't have that. Y'all are fighting people now. You look at the prophecies, you read uh, like the prophets in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, all those. Y'all don't even fit those. But y'all get to walk around and call yourselves the people. You know why that is, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Because you don't fear your God. That's the problem. Y'all don't fear y'all's God. Y'all sit up there every Sunday thinking you fear your God, throwing money in the collection plate so your pastor can afford his damn Bentley and will not do one thing to serve your God. Stop hating your brother. Easy. Stop eating pork. Easy. Stop eating certain uh, uh, seafood. Easy. That's not hard. That's not hard to do. But y'all don't want to be held to no type of standard because then, then life, you're going to start rubbing up against things that's going on in the culture of America. Then you're going to start rubbing up against the image of the beast. Then you're going to have division in your family. Christ came to divide people from their families, right. divide people from the world. But y'all ha have not learned Christ. Y'all have not learned him because these, these pastors are not showing you this. That's Keep right. going. Con, verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Yeah. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen. So there's going to be a complete paradigm shift, right? We've been serving these people. We continue to serve these people to this day, to this damn day. Because the way capitalism, I hate to break the people, the way capitalism, and, and sister, you believe in God? Yes, I do. Come, come here, let me tell me I'm conversation with you real quick. You ain't got time? You just got off work. You ain't got nothing to do. That's right. You, you, you can't hear one Bible verse real quick, though? I probably ain't got time. It, 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 I got you. I got you. Come on, come here, sis. Uh, right here. Right here. Right here. Right here, sis. Do you believe in God? Do you go to church? According to the Bible, how do you show that you believe in God? According to the Bible. What are those actions? Uh, According to the Bible, what are those actions? According to the Bible, I can't quote the Bible. I can just quote myself. Well, sister, give me give me Proverbs three verse five. Bring it up. I, I want that. I do want that. Hold that. Give me Proverbs. You give me Proverbs three verse five. Let me show you something, sister. Uh -huh. Anytime we believe in something as, as far as the Bible, as far as God, we have to come off of the Bible. That's we right. can't just we can't just because I, I can say like loving God is doing this and that. You may not agree with that, but who's going to be right? God's going to be right over that. Let like God be true and every man be a liar. So we got to stand on these scriptures. Watch this. Book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yeah. And lean not unto thine own understanding. So sister, we can't lean unto our own understanding. We have to go by what God prescribes as far as to how to serve him. Now I'm going to show you this in the Bible. Give me, give me uh, uh, 1 John 3 verse, 1 John 5. Give me 1 John 5. Let me show you something. Book of uh, Book of First John, chapter five and verse three. For this is the love of God. So it's, it's now about to show you this is the love of God. It's defining it. This is that, right? Go ahead. That we keep His commandments, yeah. and His commandments are not grievous. So to love God, you have to keep His commandments. Those are things that are, that are in Genesis through Deuteronomy. 
We have to keep those commandments to show that we love him. And on top of that, they can't be grievous to us. It shouldn't hurt you to, to want to do this. It shouldn't hurt you to want to do this. You should want to do it because you love him. Right. Just like if you have a man, right, he should want to please you because he loves you, right? It's the same way with us and God. So do you know where the commandments are? I got you. Mm -hmm. But now you have to now you have to be able to define what those things are according to the Bible. But I'm, I'm gonna ask you this. Why, why, hold, hold up, sister. No. Why, well, okay. Let me let me let me rephrase it. Right. As far as the things you that you're doing and things you're not gonna do, they have to be based off of the Bible. Is what I'm saying. So as far as, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Do you know the Lord said there's things we can eat and things we can't eat? Yeah, I don't know. I heard about that, but that's not, I mean, I'm not into that. You know, that's, but I, those, but I those. I don't that part. Like, I don't got that part. Okay, but. This is, that's the, and that's what I was going to before you came up. That's the beginning. Before you can even, give me, give me, give me Psalms again. I need Psalms again. Oh, no, you're already there. You're already there. You stay, stay where you at. Stay where you at. Give me Psalms 111, verse 10. I need to show you something, sister. Right? I'm, I'm going to get to the point real quick. You have to understand, that's the beginning. Before you can start to worship God, to love him, to do anything, that's the very first thing you have to do is figure out what you can and can't do. Watch this. Book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. So that's the beginning of wisdom. Before you can learn to learn to do anything, you gotta learn what you can and can't do, sister. But I'm going back to my original question. Do you know there's things that you can and can't eat? Do you know about pork? Yeah, I know about that. You know you can't eat pork, right? Hold up, hold up, man. I, I got I, I got you, man. Uh, let me just finish this with this. Right? Now, do you know about you know you can't eat pork? I want the word. I mean I've heard you know, And that, but sister, cry, cry. Okay, wait. I, I got you. I, wait, hold up. Hold up. I, I got you. Let's, let's not move too fast. I'm not pushing you, sister. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's go. 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 let us Okay, right, watch this. You said you're a Christian, right? Christian means follower of Christ. Did Christ eat pork? Christ never ate pork, sister. No. Well, like I say, I'm learning. I just learned that today. Can you can you stop eating pork? For God's sake? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not See? There you go. But I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go home. You know what I'm saying? Then if I say you can't eat, just eat just eat things that God wants you to eat. Don't don't eat pork. Don't eat shrimp, don't eat lobster, you can eat other things. There you go. There you go. Let me show you one more thing for you. One more verse, real quick. Give me Psalms. Give me Psalms 111, verse 60. I, I got you, man. Hold up, man. Don't you be coming for interrupting real fast. What are you, what are you doing? 111, verse 119, my bad. 119, verse 60. Oh, you're right, you're right. right there. Hey, sister. Sister. Okay, watch, 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 watch. The book of Psalm, chapter 119 and verse uh, 60. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So you got to make haste to do that, sister. You got to catch up. You got to catch up, sister. You got to make haste because you don't want to be destroyed for, for something simple as pork. Let me, let me ask you something about the Psalm situation. My name is, I want nobody to put me in your situation, and I am, and I am. You been my, drinking? My love, my love be born in the house. Every day be understandable, I am. You been drinking? Hey Amen, I been drinking, but I can tell you about the truth. Of, of the Lord, of Him. What you got? Amen. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. What you got? Well, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The book of... The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober. Yeah. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, 
as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hey, brother, you gotta walk around and be sober, hey, man. You don't, you don't want to walk around. You don't want to walk around downtown Dallas not knowing what's going on. Brother, you, 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 there's nothing you can educate me on, man. There's nothing you can educate me on. You need, you need, to, ed, you need, you need to get educated on, on an A beating, brother. That's what you need to get educated on. Go ahead. Book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, mm -hmm. that continue until night, till, uh, till wine inflame them. So it says, woe unto the person okay. who's drinking. Can you, can you let me, can you let me talk? Okay. Can, you, can you let me talk? Okay. Like if, if you want me to do what you got, let me talk. Let me talk. What, I, what I'm going to say is, the Bible condemns what you're doing is walk, like walking around drinking in the damn day. Acting like a fool. Right. It says woe unto that person, destruction unto that person, brother. Right. You need to fix that. You need to repent of that. That's, That's right. what you need to do. Right. Look, man. Look, man. Look, look, man. Uh, how, how, how about this? How about this? How about this? Right? How about this? You can go up there. You can go up there with that. You can go up there with that, brother. We we trying to teach people. We're not trying to we're not trying to have babblings with a, with somebody who just drunk. What you got? What does that say? No, no, nah, nah, I want to get back on to what I was talking about, right? No, no, there's nothing, I don't, I, no, nah, man, we ain't got nothing to talk about. We ain't got nothing to talk about, bro. What, what I had you holding? Uh, Sirach 30, 30, yeah, give me that. We can, we can go back into that. Actually, no, give me Second John, uh, Second John 4. Let's do that. Right? Look, bro, there's nothing you can teach us. There's nothing you can tell us. It, it, it's irrelevant. You're drunk. You don't even know what you're saying. No. I'm really trying to be very no. polite because, I mean, I'm, any other, a, a lot of other people here would be a lot ruder to you than I would be. So just go ahead and mosey, man. You said uh, verse 4? Yeah. The book, of second, the book of second John, chapter 1 and verse 4. Bring it out. I, great, I rejoice greatly that I fell of thy children mm -hmm. walking in truth. Yeah. As... As we was, as shall I, as we have received a commandment from the Father, mm -hmm. and I, now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, yeah. but that which I, we had from the beginning, yeah. that we love one another. So say where you at. So we had, we heard a commandment in the beginning that we shall love one another. That commandment is Leviticus nineteen verse seventeen. That commandment is Deuteronomy ten. Those commandments are scattered all throughout the Old Testament by us loving each other. Go ahead. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Yeah. This is the, this is the commandment that ye have heard from the beginning. So we've heard this from the beginning, that we love one another, and that the, the performance of that is keeping the commandments. Like, if I love you, I'm not going to allow you to, I'm not going to allow you to continue to be a sinner. I'm not going to suffer sin upon my brother. Go ahead. Ye should walk in it. Mm -hmm. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. And a lot of people do that, like, because here's the thing. We be reading scripture sometimes and just try to keep it verbatim. People do this through their actions. Right. When people want to negate certain laws, when people don't want to keep the law, people want to say they believe in Christ but don't keep the law, you are not confessing Christ came in the flesh. Because if you did, if you did, you'd be held to his words. Give me Matthew 4, verse 4. Because <coughs> here's the thing, right? You can, like, anybody ever heard the, the, uh, the phrase, actions speak louder than words? Right. Your actions speak a lot louder than your words. That's if you right. say you believe in God, but I see you committing adultery, right. if I see you lying, stealing, right, defrauding your neighbor, those actions speak to where you don't believe in God. Right? And you don't believe in Christ because Christ said this. Go ahead. Book of Matthew chapter 4 and, and verse 4. Bring it out. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, yeah. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So if you confess Christ, you would have to confess that as well. That's right. So if you're, not keep, if you're not keeping that yourself, you're not confessing Christ coming in the flesh. Because when he came in the flesh, that's what he said. Right. A lot of y'all are liars and deceivers. Even people who want to call themselves Israelites, they will say, I'm in the truth. The truth is you keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. The truth is knowing who you are. The truth is a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. So right. when you act or speak contrary to that, you're not confessing him in the flesh. Right. Keep going. Uh, so I... 
The book of 2 John, chapter 2 and verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world mm -hmm. who confess not that Christ is come in the flesh. Yeah, but you're a deceiver. Like, just like how the Christian church is a deceiver who went to say that uh, Christ died, he did it, so now I don't got to do it. You're being a deceiver. Anybody saying, I, I, I can keep all these laws except this one, you are a deceiver. Right. If you want to call yourself an Israelite and say you're a practicing Israelite and saying you love God and, say, and, and, say, and call yourselves a Christian, things like that, but not keeping the law, you are a deceiver. Right. You're deceiving other people and you're deceiving yourself. Go ahead. This is a deceiver. Mm -hmm. It's an antichrist. And a what? In an, an antichrist. Anti Just like I said before in the video I made before, a lot of Christians are really antichrist. Right. If you're not keeping these laws, that you commandments, you're you're getting the complete opposite of what your taught. That's right. Completely. You're an antichrist. Go ahead. Verse 8. Look to yourself that we lose not the things which we have wrought, mm -hmm. but that we will receive a full reward. That we do what? That we will receive a full reward. And that cuts the doctrine of people say like eternal salvation. You, you, you call on Christ and now you're saved. There's nothing you can do to lose your salvation. That verse is contrary to that. There's no such thing as you just say you believe in Christ and now you're saved. There's nothing, there's nothing nobody can do to pull you out of that. The Bible teaches against that. And looking at it from a Hebrew Israelite standpoint, we have to watch ourselves that we don't fall into transgressions. Right. Or get complacent in things. Right. Right. Once you start slipping, in, oh... Well, I'll give you a perfect example. The fringes was made so that we remember to keep the law. What if you go outside one day, oh, I forgot my fringes. Oh, well, I'm not going to go back. Then you start doing something else. You go outside, oh, I ain't got my fringes. Up, I mean, it's just a little bit of port. Up, it's just a little bit of this. Next thing you know, you're out of this truth. Right. Next thing you know, you're back in the Christian church. Next thing you know, you're making status about how the Lord delivered you from Hebrewism. Like, that, it, it all starts with that. You have to keep yourselves before you lose your full, re your full reward. Go ahead. Whosoever transgresseth. Yeah, wait, wait, hold up. This is the key point. Whosoever transgresseth. Go ahead. And abide not in the doctrine of Christ. Yeah. Had not God. Yeah, have not what? Had not God. So if you sin, you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. So this proves what I was saying before. If you are a sinner, if you teach people to sin, you want to say you want to call yourself a Christian and say the law is done away with or it's not required, you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Because Christ said you have to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Right. Wasn't the law, was not the law written by the written by the finger of God? Didn't it say that in Exodus? Right. It says that. So these are God's words. You right. have to live by that. Right. Unless you're a deceiver. Go ahead. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ. Yeah. He had both the Father and the Son. Yeah, both what? The both Father and the, the Son. Son. So to abide in the doctrine of Christ is for you to keep the commandments. If you abide in that doctrine, you have the Son to be your advocate, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and you have the Father. You're on his good side. Right. You can receive that salvation. Give me Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Yeah, that's, that's imperative. That's imperative because we're getting closer. Give me uh, Revelation 12. We're getting closer and closer and closer to the end because we're seeing prophecies being fulfilled. I'll give you a perfect example. Everybody heard about the UFO, the, the so-called UFO sightings. Now here come NATO. Like Deacon was just going to this. Here come NATO. We're going to talk about revamping the Space Force. We're going to invite and annex other nations into the Space Force. To do what? What are they doing that for? To fulfill Revelation 12 because the, the devil's army has to fight against Michael's angels. That has to happen. That's that war in heaven that we're going to see. Y'all are inching and fulfilling prophecy day by day. Wait, and knowing that, we need to, we, we matter of fact, this verse says it. This verse God, says it. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time yeah. to awake out of sleep. Yeah. For now is our salvation nearer than we were, uh, it's like it, nearer than when we believe. Now, 2000, 2022 and 2023, I've never felt closer to salvation right. at this point, bro. I've never seen it. The, the, the war in Ukraine ramping up. You see uh, Putin posturing against America ramping up. You see China restoring their, uh, restoring their uh, relationships with Russia over and over again. They said it's never been stronger, right? Yeah, we can smell World War III in the air. 
It's coming real soon. And that war, a lot of these people, a lot of these people don't understand. This war going to be different. People talking about, so, oh, if they try to draft me, I ain't going to go. You ain't got to worry about no draft. Freeze. Don't not about to have to worry. Watch this. Hold this. Hold this. Give me Isaiah, 6, Isaiah 9, verse 5. Y'all not about to have to worry about no draft because this war is going to be something different. Y'all talking about people, y'all talking about that war in, uh, uh, what's that, the, the freaking, the Middle East, what's that, the Desert Storm? You got Desert Storm, you got the, the, the Civil War, you got the American Revolution, you got all those words, confused noise where people shooting each other, right? Swords going through people, people fighting each other to the death. This war not about to be like that. Let's see how that war going to be like. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, and verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is come with a confused noise, mm -hmm. in garments robed in blood. Yeah. But this shall be with the with burning and fuel fire. With what? With burning and fuel, fuel fire. It's gonna be with burning and fuel of fire. This place is going to be melted. Right. This place will be eradicated. This, like it says in the prophecies, Babylon isn't gonna be inhabited by antibody. Right. The down. smoke is gonna go up forever as a memorial to this place. Right. That's what the prophecies say. Hey man, what's what's hey John Lennon? What's your what's your question, man? You just curious? Come here, let me let me have a conversation with you, John Lennon. Let, let me see what you let's see what you believe in. John Lennon, you know, you know they all look the same, right? Y'all, you know y'all all look the same. But like I was saying, yeah, I, I know, I, I bet. But right, uh, do you you believe in God? Um, yeah, man, yeah. You believe in the Bible? I mean, I got a complicated like view of it. I don't have it all worked out in my head, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess so. There's some stuff in the Bible. I think, I think the Bible is a powerful document. I know that's what. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful document, right? So, do you know in the same Bible what it says about Caucasian? Give me, give me Malachi. <laughs> give me the NLT. You got the NLT? I want to show you something, right? Now, in the Bible, there's various nations, right? Do you know what nation white people come from? As like for for mo for the most part, white people there. they come yeah that that's that, that's through the spirit that's through the spirit. Right? White people come from a man named Esau. Wow. The rest of that nation is called Edom. Let me show you how God feels about it. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse two. Uh, Malachi chapter one and verse two. This is the CSV. Is it better? Yes. Okay. The CSV. I says, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you asked, how have you loved us? Was it Esau, Jacob's brother? Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's declaration. Even so, I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. How does the Lord feel about Caucasian? I hated Esau. <laughs> That's how he feel about y'all, man. And you gotta, you gotta realize that he, like, look at y'all skin, man. Like, when you go outside, and you start getting skin, uh, sunburned. Yeah, yeah. You, you notice how we don't do that? Yeah. You notice how nobody else does that? Yeah. Why is that? What do you mean that, like, God doesn't? Like, what do you mean God? I, you mean God, like, he hates y'all. Oh, he, 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 he elaborates on it. He, he elaborates on it. It says, um, it's not good. But it says, verse 3, But I hated Esau, I turned his mountains into a wasteland, and gave his inheritance to the desert jackals. Sorry, where's this from? Malachi chapter 1. Though Edom says, we have been the, uh, the, the best, we have been uh, oh, step on that. That's devastated, but we will, uh, we will rebuild yeah. the ruins. The Lord of armies says this. They may build, but I will demolish. Yeah. They will be called a wicked country. Yeah. And the Lord, it's like, and the people, the Lord has cursed forever. So the Lord has cursed y'all forever. That's right. What do you mean? What, do you, what, do you mean? what does that mean? Y'all have an eternal judgment. That's right. Before y'all done any good or evil, the Lord already hated y'all. He wanted y'all to come out non-melanated. He wanted y'all to be evil. Because look, look what happens when y'all go anywhere in the world. Y'all rape people. Y'all rob people. Y'all enslave people. Right. Isn't that what y'all done? Yes. Ha has, no, has, no, has, any, has anybody ever done anything about it? Uh, I mean, you know you know nobody done that. Then. So, what do you think, so what do you think the Lord's going to do? He's going to bring his wrath. But who is that going to happen to, man? Huh? Who is that going to happen to? I guess the white people. Exactly. What goes around has to come around, man. Because look, look at this. Look at this, right? You see this? See, I, I personally made this sign. I love pointing this out, right? I personally made this sign. You see the chattel slavery. Y'all did that, right? Black Coast, KKK, that was y'all, right? Jim Crow, that was y'all, right? Right? Red light, that was y'all, right? So, is there anything you can do for yourself? No, there's, there's nothing you can do. That's not, like, cause, like, 
Hey, hold on, I'll give you a perfect example. You remember this child of slavery? Yes. When, when slaves, had, slaves had children, right? Could them slaves do anything to get out of that slavery? No, so, so what's going to happen to y'all, man? You, 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 think, you think you're better than us? You, so, so you're not, you're not better than us, man. But, but you, but, but you got to look, 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 realize this. You got to realize this. We're better than you when you know it. You know that, right? You know we're better than you, right? Turn, turn it right there. Look, look at those cameras, right? Just say, say, say you know we're better. Say that. Say it to the camera. We're, we're better because we're superior to you. Huh? Okay, right? Superior. I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example, right? One example, right? In the summer, it's like 100 degree weather, right? When I go outside, am I going to burn? When you go outside, are you going to burn? Are we superior to you in that? I guess so, yeah. We're going to look at sports. Who's ruling sports right now? Is that y'all? No. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. And at, at every way y'all have obtained land, did y'all do a fair fight or did y'all just sneak attack them with guns? That sounds cowardly. Right? So, 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 y'all, y'all are inferior. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it real fast. Hold it, I, I hold it real fast. Y'all are inferior in your melanin. You're inferior in physicality, and the tactics you use to take land is cowardly. We don't do that. We're bad, so in the color, yeah, that, that's, that's their melanin too. Yep. But we don't have to do none of that because we're stronger than y'all. And the Bible says so. Right. So that's how you're inferior to us. And not only that, God says we're superior to everybody. That's right. I just want to show you that on a carnal level. Give me that, Deuteronomy. Let me show you how God feels about us real quick. You, you know what, what's your name? John Lennon? What's your name? Luke? Luke? Hey, man, that's, that's real unfortunate. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Yeah. The Lord thy God had chosen thee yeah. to be a special people yeah. unto himself. Yeah. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now we're all equal. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So not only do not only did I prove it with the, the line of question that I gave you, God even says it. That's right. And on top of it, he says he hates you. So that's what we're out here teaching. Okay, and because of this, right, I showed you, y'all did this, right? Because of that, y'all got to get this. Give me Revelation 13. Right. Yeah, watch this. Y'all have to get this. You see, I, I got you, right? Or, or, you know Christ, right? Y'all said this is Christ. Y'all did that through that white supremacy. Christ looks like this. Right. And according to Revelation 1. So this is what's going to happen to y'all. You see this? Because of this, you get this. And I'm going to show you it in the Bible. Watch this. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity. Did you lead us into captivity? Yeah, yeah, you did. Shall go into captivity. So what's going to happen for that, man? Now, what did the verse say, though? Okay, I know, I know. Let's read it again. Verse 10 from the top. He that leadeth into captivity. What did that say? Did y'all lead into captivity? Okay. Shall go into captivity. What did that say? So what's going to happen to y'all? Yeah, there you go. There you go. And give the Lord a round of applause, man. You know what? It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. That's crazy. Like, what I hear, what I learned from the Bible is compassion. And that's like, I mean, to me, that's the most important thing that I can do. I don't know, man. Only, only that's, love, that's a hard message to adapt to compassion. But the Bible isn't all compassion. What about when the Lord killing people? That's fucked up. Is that compassion? What, what about the Lord telling? Hold up, wait, 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 real fast. What about the Lord? What about the Lord telling the Israelites? Hold up, hold up. Wait, hold, I got you. I got you. When you. What about when the Lord told the Israelites to go take the land of Canaan and kill those people? Was that compassion? What, what about? What about? And you seen the Prince of Egypt? You remember how the? Okay, right. You know about the story about Moses? The Moses and he, uh, let my people go when he killed the first, the Lord killed the firstborn. Did he have compassion on the Egyptians? Okay then. So is the Bible all compassion? No, it's not. The only compassion that we give me, give me, uh, give me uh, Leviticus 19 verse 17. But I need, I need the NLT, right? The only people who are, who the Bible commands to have compassion is for God chosen people, the Israelites, to have ca compassion on each other. I can do whatever I want to you. Matter of fact, give me Leviticus chapter 19, Leviticus uh, 25. My bad, 25 verse 35. I'm gonna show you what the Lord says I can do to you. Watch this. Bring it out. 17. The book of Leviticus. Chapter 19 and verse 17. Do not nurse hatred. Get NIV. Oh, no, it says it. It says it. It says it. My bad. I didn't read down. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 17 in the NLT. 
Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. And it's your relatives, people who you're related to. Go ahead. Confront people directly yeah. so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Mm -hmm. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite. Uh, who? A fellow Israelite. That's all the people we command to have compassion to, a fellow Israelite. Right. Go ahead. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So that's who the Lord commanded us to have compassion on. That's who our neighbor is. You're not my neighbor. You're my slave master. That's, right. that's what you do. So watch this. Let me show you what the Lord said I can do to you. Do you believe this? 25. 25. Higher servant. No, no. That's 40. Yeah, 44. 44. The book of Genesis, the book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 44. Both thy bond men and thy bond maid. Do you know what bond man and bond maid is? Slavery. That's that's child that's this. Child of slavery. Right? I'll read that again from the top. Both thy bond men and thy bond maid, yeah. which thou shalt have shall be of the heathen that are round about you. So that's, the Lord said, I can do this to you. In Leviticus, tw Leviticus 25, he said, my, my bondmaids, my bond, my bondmen can be of John Lennon. Look here, man. We're going to change your name because we can't, we can't have that. We can't have that, man. But th it's going to be something different, right? The Lord said, I can do that. That's how he feels. So how do you feel about that? It, yeah, yeah, it sucks. It sucks, man. It sucks. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, good talk, man. So you, you know, you invite me out. I know you probably late for your cornhole game with your buddy, man. Yeah, so. Oh, wait, well, one more thing before you go. One more thing, I got you. Go ahead. The Book of Amos, chapter one and verse eleven. Thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of evil, yeah, y'all, and, and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof, yeah. because he did pursue his brother with the sword. So, the, there's nothing you can do, man. He's not turning away that judgment, so, hey, man, just go get on your bike, man. Go run it, go max out your, your credit cards. Do what you have to live it up, man, because just know this is coming. That's right. Just know this is coming, man. Just real bad for you. Go ahead. It did cast off all pity. Yeah. And his anger did tear perpetually. Yeah. And he kept his wrath. Forever. They, they do keep their wrath forever. They, like, they, they wouldn't think Esau, Esau wouldn't believe they stopped oppressing us, right? right, right. But, but this sign shows otherwise. All the way until this day, they're still oppressing us and putting us in zones to where they can control us. That's redlining. So their, their anger tears perpetually, and they have to get judged for it. That's why the Lord is not going to turn away that punishment, man. But with that... I know I'm over my time. I'm going to say call hello, Yahweh. But I show them Yahweh Shai and say Shalom. Hello. Again, all praise Yahweh. But I show them Yahweh Shai. Kwame Asherala. Shalom.